Hey everybody, it's Charles, your hobby hero, coming at you with another video today. We're going to take a look at one of my favorite deck lists to play, the Amber Emerald Aggro deck. We're going to be looking at some gameplay as well as my current build for the deck. I really wanted to highlight this deck again because there was a recent tournament, very large tournament down in Miami, where exactly zero copies of this list showed up. And I really wanted to take a look and see if this deck was still viable. But before we hop in, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button down in the bottom corner. I do appreciate it. I do put out regular content about the hobbies that I love the most with this channel being dedicated to the card games that I play. Now we're going to be taking a look at the deck list. We're going to be looking at quite a few games against a variety of other decks that I'm going to be playing against. And then some final thoughts at the end on whether I think this deck is still viable in the current meta. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, so here we go, our Emerald Amber list. Uh, you see we have 60 cards here. Deck total comes in at $197.96. So it's not too expensive on here. As you can see, our curve is a very, very low end curve. All our cards for the most part are character cards, which is not surprising. I don't really think this deck does well if you try to diversify it think it is very good at getting to 20 lore quickly and very consistent at getting to 20 lore quickly and really should be what you focus on. Uh, four Lilos, Making a Wish, again kind of a necessary evil in the deck. She does generate two lore on turn one. She's the only character in these two colors that can do that. And we really want to be putting a two or three lore generator in play every single turn. Stitch, another one drop, kind of our backup one drop with Duke of Wesselton down here as well. Uh, kind of in that order from best to worst. Lilo being our best, Stitch kind of our secondary option, and Duke of Wesselton being our third. We definitely want to play something on turn one though, which is why there are 12 one drops in the deck. Uh, LeFou, our first uh, two drop, two lore generator here. We have him maxed out as a four of. He is, again, probably our second or third option for our two drops, number one being Flynn Rider. And then the Simba kind of depends. If they don't play a one drop on their turn one, you don't really need to protect them. Then your Flynn Rider and your LeFou obviously move up. If they do play a one drop that can challenge beneficially to your one drop, then Simba obviously moves up in that order as well. But obviously, we want to mulligan and hopefully see a good combination of our one and two drops. Our three drops here, we've got Mickey Mouse, True Friend, and Cheshire Cat, not all there. Both three drop, two lore generators. They function fairly similarly. Uh, obviously, early game, Mickey Mouse's stats are going to be a little bit better to have because he can challenge favorably for a lot of stuff in that, that range. Cheshire Cat. Late game is going to be more punishing for your opponents to remove him. So, you know, kind of the trade-offs, like I said, early game, I usually look for Mickey Mouse more often than I do Cheshire Cat to hit right on three. But neither one of them are substantially different, seeing as ideally we just want to be turning them sideways to quest. Now you'll notice that these three drops here, uh, the Mickey Mouse or Cheshire Arcade, either one, I do play over a just-in-time. Mathematically, they produce just about the same amount of lore per card, and that's best-case scenario for each card. And then obviously, as the game progresses, the, the Mickey Mouse becomes less of a detriment off the top of your deck, whereas just-in-time can be a completely dead card or a disadvantageous card later in the game. Uh, Hans... I, again, it kind of fills the same role as the Lilo. You're going to get to a spot in pretty much every matchup where you just want to be top decking two and three lore generators. And as such, you need to have as many of them in the deck as possible. Hans Scheming Prince a lot of times ends up being ink because of where he falls in the curve. Despite having more lore that he generates than Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell usually is my preferred play because of the evasive. She's just harder to deal with generally speaking. But again, like I said, we want to jam pack as many top decks as we can in here because this deck top decks very, very well as it stands. Tinkerbell again in here for the evasive. She's very hard for a lot of decks to deal with. Even if they are playing the evasive decks, 
on four pongo and their tinkerbells don't trade even and we're trying to just race to the end and we should have the advantage in amber with that uh, moana is one you don't see a whole lot and uh as the format has kind of been shaping up i like her more and more again we're trying to run towards that 20 lore mark as fast as we can she is a three lore generator on five which is where we get a lot of work in from our uh, lore generators that six willpower puts her out of most things that steel can do's range for really a, a good advantage. Uh, you're talking about at six, like a big tink and a grab your swords being involved to take her out in a single attack. Um, you know, you're talking about two smashes to take her out before she can quest. So while she doesn't have ward like Cusco does, she is about as close to a guaranteed three lore against a steel matchup that you can get because it just requires so many cards in their hand to take care of her favorably. Uh, so I really, I bumped her up. I originally had her in her two, bumped her up to three, and then now I just have the full four set in there with as much steel as we see running around. I think Cusco is the best character that we have in the game right now. The ward on a three lore generator with decent stats, and then to top it all off, like if he's challenged down, he's gonna take the character that challenges him with him. This card is just insane. Its literal only drawback is that it's uninkable. And we're running a pretty low uninkable count, so it's not too much of a detriment there. Uh, we do have five, we do have four of the Mad Hatters as well. Again, another just solid three lore generator with decent stats. And then we have two of the Stitch Rockstar. Again, I, I can't cut him entirely. He's probably our worst uh, three lore generator in the deck by a pretty big margin. That Being a six drop is substantial. His stats aren't terrible, though. He is If he does hit play, he does survive, like double grab your swords. does usually require, like, two spells to take care of them but as you'll see from the gameplay that we have like six just isn't as easy for this deck to get to as five now i do like that he can shift on four and be kind of like a surprise to lore out of nowhere a lot of times you can catch your opponent by like playing a mad hatter down and then maybe playing the small stitch and they're doing the math in their head for the following turn deciding how they're going to make their plays and then you shift into the big stitch and all of a sudden you're generating six lore that turn instead of four. I do like that. And for that reason, I, I haven't been able to make myself cut him entirely. But if I were going to be making additional cuts to this deck, he would probably be the one to go. He also does make the stitch on turn early turns a little bit more relevant. Is if you can hit this guy on four, he comes in as a three lore generator on four with a little bit bigger stats than like your Hans would have. And then our top end here, we finish out with Genie on the job. We have two copies of him. I'd love to run more copies of him, but the fact that he is uninkable, you just don't want to get your hand clogged up. Getting two uninkable cards in your opening hand that aren't Lilo can really make it hard for the deck to get to its five and six drops. So I do have him at two and I've kept him at two. Being a two lord generator with evasive though, he is very, very good and he can throw the math off dramatically in your favor as well. If your opponent is trying to race you towards the end, you dropping a two lord generating evasive character while returning their biggest lord generator back to their hand can really tip the scales in your favor. There's also been a few games where I'm playing against like Ruby matchups where I'll bounce my Cusco that I just quested with and then leave a two lord generator that they have to deal with in play but they're not going to want to play be prepared because they know you just put a Cusco right back in your hand and then our only actions in the deck are four copies of you have forgotten me this card is amazing if you are not going first pretty much against any matchup now you want to make sure that you aren't prioritizing this card when you're going first especially in the current meta there's quite a bit of card draw and this card's really not going to do you a whole lot of good most in most scenarios when you're going first but when you're on the draw or when you're going second this card is fantastic and i usually will prioritize it in my opening seven because there's a very high likelihood that on your turn four your opponent's going to be down to like two or 
three cards. Depending on the matchup, this can absolutely just break the back of whatever deck you're going against. Uh, obviously better in some matchups than others, and obviously better in other scenarios. It's probably one of those kind of like finesse cards that a lot of people that I see play, play it incorrectly. If they have four cards or more in their hand, you're probably not playing this card unless you have two of them in your hand, and that's literally the only play you have just because you're going to leave them with the best cards in their hand anyways. But if you can get them down on three or two, like Ruby Amethyst, you might be able to play on four just because they are so starved for inking and playing a card a turn against this matchup. But in most scenarios, this card is not going to be good if they have more than three cards in their open hand. So let's take a look at some gameplay. All right, so as you can see in Platinum, got a pretty good win rate in it right now. Let's see how we can do with it now that probably most everybody is playing the Steel Amber decks. All right, we really want to keep a one drop in here. Otherwise, we really want to mulligan for our better cards to hit. Lilo there is nice. Ooh, three Lilo's not so nice. Let me get rid of this guy because we won't be playing any other one drops this game. <laughs> I just hope they don't play Captain Hook here, I guess. Stitch is not great either. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is pretty rough. Start. No Hans and no Simba. He is he's going to get both though. <laughs> Simba and a one drop. Mm. Okay, we got a little bit of time here. Set up our Mickey Mouse. Can't do anything to the Lilos next turn. He's playing blue. Okay. It's actually a little bit better for me. Because he's not playing any sweepers. So I can just kind of sit on these Lilos. If he plays let it go or Hades into them I'm I'm fine with that as well So let it go at this point. Get rid of the stitch. Honestly, I don't know that it makes a ton of sense. Again, he doesn't have any sweepers, so just keeping the Lilos out there is probably fine. Okay. Again, less worried about what he draws into in this matchup. As long as I can race him to the end. Currently, I think I can. It's a pretty bad top deck there, though. The hold. 
Hmm. That's five. I'm going to play a ton of six drops, so let's see what he's got here. All the Simbas. First 20 cards having three Simbas. Not terrible. Again, not super important there. So, okay. Go game two. All right, we're going first. Man. Missed everything we're looking for again. Um, you have forgotten me. He's not really a first one. Three LeFous. Uh, similar. We're just going to keep Stitch so we have a one drop and hopefully hit some of our later curve here. Okay, we've got Simba and Flynn Rider. Not terrible. Uh, we won't be playing two Stitches out. So... Now, depending on how he plays here, okay, so we are going to try to get as many of these cards out of his hand as possible, which I think we want to go... this direction. I don't know. That was a mistake, but I guess it's probably not a huge deal. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Actually worked out pretty well in my favor. Um, let's see. Let's go with Mickey on curve here. Okay, inking Maleficence to play Maleficent. Not terrible. Now we're going to ink this Cheshire, and we're going to start Evasive now. So even if he has a Rush character here, I'm, I think I'm fine. Uh, possibly have the big Aladdin next turn. Honestly, gosh, I feel like I'm st still kind of okay, even if he has the big Aladdin. <sighs> hmm. It forces him to play the big Aladdin and not Dragonfire. All right. Put him down to two cards in his hand. Oh, seems friends. Pretty good. It's actually even better. Hmm. I think I'm going to go this route. I don't play many uninkables. I 
we'll see. Next turn, I'll be at 18, so the one doesn't really help me. Hmm. I'm going to hold it just in case. Could draw Cusco next turn, and I won't feel very good about that. So he's at six. He's got his dragon fire. Uh, let's go quest. Quest. It's going to be at seven next turn. I have lethal. I am going to throw the bodyguard down. Maybe see if I can pull something out of his hand. Okay. Honestly, all right. We'll drop Mad Hatter next turn. He's gonna have to drop a card out of his hand. Let me drop Ursula. Is he inking something? No, did not ink anything. It's interesting. Okay, so he has to answer the Hatter or the Tinkerbell this turn. Sun, be prepared. Very good top deck. Um, let's see, if he plays Maui, Plays Beeper. He hasn't inked anything in two turns. I'm going to guess he's got another Be Prepared in his hand. Um, I don't know that I'm, Yeah, we'll go with that. Yep. I'm just. Throw Hans is out there because it doesn't really matter. He's not playing any three damage spells. That's that's probably game there. Okay. Dragon fired it up. There's two cards in hand. Is that play? Yeah. I suppose it is. There we go. Now again, that's what we want to do. We want to get within striking range and just keep putting pressure on the board, force them to have an answer every single turn. Okay. Let's see if we can hit some Amber Steel. Most popular deck in the format and haven't seen it yet. Oh, hey, look at this though. I actually have decent opener. We're just gonna drop those actually I may keep the Tinkerbell just because it's inkable and then just try to fill in the last two spots with inkable spells there we go uh, Hans Lilo I'm gonna go first with this hand too should be pretty good Okay, looks like we may have the aggro list here. There's Captain Hook, uh, which we are fine with. Prince Eric following up. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. Yep. Uh, let's see, go Tinkerbell, let's 
and get the use out of these Lilos before he goes super wide. His next turn he'll be able to play, or this turn he can play the Aerial. And next turn he'll be able to sing, grab your swords. No. Smash is fine. It's less offensive, actually. Mm -hmm. well, that's one less card he has in his hand for Tinkerbell. Um, be able to play. I don't want to give him two cards if he's got the ability to heal. Uh, Rapunzel, there we go. What I was looking for. Okay, was not expecting Emerald there. Um. Well, it's interesting. Um, let's see if I can get one more card out of his hand. This turn, um, I mean, if he quests again, I'll I'll kill it with the tank. Um, Very curious. Hmm. Bill, definitely not seen this build before. Let's see what we got there. Hmm. Two copies of a whole new world. Oof. That has got to hurt. Top deck's third copy. Negative. Okay. Move that. I will take that. And honestly, if he attacks into Lilo, it's fine. Takes three lore away from him. Six drop Genie? No, Tink. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Can I win this race here you got five I've got five I think I'm just gonna quest like that. Lady Tremaine. What's he get? Smash? A whole new world? Okay. Sing a whole new world? Um... Can't win. I guess we play him since he's intent on playing a whole new world this turn. Sings it, takes him. He did. Oh, he did sing it. Okay. <laughs> he sung it with Lady Train. Thought he didn't sing it there for a second. 
That's pretty good. It really, ha I mean, it has to kill everything this turn. That's probably a good sign that he can't. He did have Gravity Sword. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Can I stop him now? I don't think I can now, actually. That Prince Eric did it. Bounce the Hatter, and he still has four. Yep. All right. All right. Let's see if we can get some steel. Amber here. Uh, it's not terrible. Let's see. Maybe we can get a Lila with those three. Yeah, we did. Nice. Don't get too greedy. You might end up with a handful of... Okay. Uninkables. So... Judging by that, I'm going to imagine we are into the Amber Amethyst. A Ruby Amethyst, sorry. It is surprising to see so many of them, and I still haven't seen a Steel Amber yet. That's too greedy. I'd like to throw the Flynn out there. If I was on the play, I probably would have thrown the Flynn out there. Get an attack off the Gaston, but... Alright, I might get one after all. Four cards in his hand already. That is a nice... Nice draw there. Uh, let's see. <laughs> what do I want to play here? Mickey, I think we just play Ryder. Probably Maleficent, three drop Maleficent's probably the thing I want to see least here. Looks like he might be playing the evasive build here though, so we might be seeing a Pongo. No, Elsa. That's fine. Prepared and a Zeus gone. You can tap down with Elsa, anyways. We got here. Pongo! Go ahead and ink a Mickey. 
Just in case I draw a genie next turn. if his top decks were worse than my top decks. <laughs> there we go. Um, do I play both of them? I mean, we know this one's big. So it could be Be Prepared. So we didn't already play it. Could be a Dragonfire he's just holding. Uh, uh, I think I'm going to go for it. Let's see if it pays off. Okay. Well, not to be prepared, so that's good. I think that... That should be good there. Big Elsa. Okay. Nice. Gonna draw an answer for Flynn. Or it's game. There we go. Very nice. Alright, well, I am gonna play until I hit a steel song list here, because. You're going to find them, find them if you find them in a tournament, for sure. Okay, we're going first. So we don't really need to keep that. Again, we're missing most of what we want to draw early. Let's see if we can get any of the other pieces here. I got a Simba. Take it. Steel song list here. That's uh, pretty good that he didn't have the turn one hook. OK. 
Okay, be our guest. Another good card gone. There's Prince Eric. Not surprised. Let's see if he goes a little tankier. It's kind of bad news for me. So we don't want to see. Uh, beans are probably going to see it. Oh, no, smash. It's interesting. Take the low hanging fruit. It's interesting. If he goes two cards down, next time he go four. Don't think that's very good at four. So we're going to go this route. If he inked and played two cards, that's pretty unlikely this early in the game. Just Ariel. Uh, so we are not going to quest with Stitch here. And the reason being, he can attack into her and then heal with Rapunzel. We only give him the extra cards. Um, go here. And here. Uh, he could also just sing Grab Your Swords and kill the Stitch this turn anyways, which is fine. But I'd rather him be down cards than up cards. Okay. All right, well, that's pretty good. All right, this puts us in a pretty good spot. I doubt he can kill this turn. He may be able to. That's pretty much worthless at this point. Um. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, that's a pretty good spot for us. He could have double grab your swords, but if he doesn't, that's probably game over from him for him. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and take you out. And. I'm gonna play Mad Hatter. Taking out that Ariel is actually pretty important because um, she can sing and well, obviously would have given him two characters in play too for that stitch to hit. Of course, now he's got a four drop that cannot sing. So if he wants to play Grab Your Sword, it's his only play for the turn. Cars in hand. I uh, still can't sing a grab your sword, so <sighs> what's the play here? I think I have to put lethal down, force him to have a grab your sword.
Okay. Just two, grab your swords down. I'll be at 18 this turn. Oh, that's tempting. That is real tempting. Um, but I think we just go for the win here. I don't think he has... I mean, if he has both... No, he can't even play both. Grab your swords. So that's game. I always do love playing that. I only have two cards in their hand, though. But yeah, there's there's nothing he's got at this point. See, again, though, that's why it's important to take care of that aerial when you can. All right. Let's see, we've had a pretty good matchup here. We've only, I don't think we've played any double, or oh, no, we've had two Ruby Amethyst decks so far. Okay, so we got our Lilo, and that's it. Let's see if we can get a Hans, and okay, we got a Simba. It's pretty good. We got a Hans too. No Hans. Well, I meant Flynn, not Hans. We got a Hans. Okay. There's Hook. Uh, let's see, let's go, I hope he doesn't play Prince Eric as well. Did not, it's pretty good for me. Uh, let's see here. And Captain Hook trades. Ink. Two cards? Did he play two things? Yeah. An ink here. And we'll set up you have forgotten me for next turn. We'll have a stitch in play and then whatever he plays this turn, which hopefully isn't an aerial. Throwing away a big tink. That's less fun for me. We got here one whole new world. So I'm guessing he held on to the other one. Yep. Imagine he's got the big tank now. Which is fine. 
We probably put down the Moana here just because she's big enough to survive. And then he'll lose his big pink as well. Interesting. No point to play Lilo. I guess. concede to that. Alright, let's see if we can get him again. That was about the worst case scenario that we could have had in that matchup. That Rapunzel is like literally any other card. That's probably game. Going second again. This is a pretty impressive number of going seconds. And then we have a Have You Forgotten Me. Wow. Okay. No Lilo, no Flynn. Alright. Alright. I'm playing Emerald. I was hoping I'd draw another Duke of Wesselton. Played nothing on his turn one, so I guess that's not terrible for me. Does giving plus one cards in his hand though for me trying to catch him with that. The Steel Emerald again. Huh? Nothing on turn two either. I really wish I had a two lore generator. Would be great. I have blanked on 12 cards that produce lore at this point. All right, so what we got here? Not much I can do about a big tank here. Um. Still have so many cards in his hand for next turn. Mm -hmm. I guess the Mickey at least a lot. Well, he's gonna kill the Mickey probably. So. Car in his hand. It's pretty bad. And play ink, play something, and then sing it. Oh, there's Quest it. It's actually 
Pretty good for me. Whole new world. And a Lady Tremaine. Uh, ink. That. Of course he is a Captain Hook. Why wouldn't he? Alright, I'll force him to swing in with the tank. And the Cusco. New World. What's he trying to? I don't know why he did that. I think that seems very unlikely that he can win now. Hoping to get two grab your swords. Just over 15 cards in. Only one grab your sword. Alright, so let's see here. Can still kill her, but would need to lose his Tinkerbell. So it should be good. He can't play three. He can only play two. And Moana's six willpower is over that. Okay. I don't know what he's doing now then. I genuinely don't. That was... I don't know. It's just to show me that he could do it. One second, not terrible. It's not playing as me many steel song lists as I would have hoped for this session of testing, but it is what it is. Deck, maybe people are just getting tired of playing it. I don't know. Let's see here. I'm going one second. Yay! Um, actually, I'm going to keep him. I'm going to just keep this whole hand just to make sure I have inkables. Let's see what we got here. Okay, we got Amber. I uh, don't need two Simbas. Well, 
One Rapunzel down. Interesting. Um, I think I'll go with Hans here. The Flynn Rider. I'm assuming Grandma runs in the stitch. Maybe a Mickey here. It puts him on five next turn. Worse than Mickey. He's still on five. Nice six now. For next turn, ink and play something. Uh, man. Play nothing this turn. Just move on. I mean, he's on Hades this turn. If he hits Stitch, we won't have to ink anything else for the rest of the game. already though and I think I mean Hades is probably his best play here and not a great one Interesting. Tax here. Let's see where he goes with this. Interesting proposition there. I think, I mean, he could have a third Hades. He could have a let it go. He doesn't. I think I'm probably good here. This will get me to 15, and then I have two Cusco's in hand. Does have a third Hades. That is. Pretty, pretty darn good for him. Um, I think I just lose to three Hades. Um, I think I was going to lose to three Hades either way, though. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't think there's much of a game here. Let's go ahead and concede. Going second again, wow. This is it's very generous of the game. Very helpful for testing when you never go first. <laughs> Two, you have forgotten maze. I always hate that because when you ink one right away, like, they've got to know what you've got in your hand. Um, but maybe they don't. Maybe misplays. It looks like we're playing against the same guy maybe that we had last round. He has access to Rapunzel. Philocedes don't really care about him so much. Probably won't do anything this turn, honestly. So I don't want him to draw. off of Rapunzel. Let's see. Fill quest challenge. Still not great. Um, I'm actually going to leave Simba back. He doesn't really get any value out of Philocedes. Interesting. I'm ahead of the race here, and I feel like I will top deck better than he will, especially since he didn't hit any of his ramp. It's fine. Can't do anything with Philocedes this turn. Challenge into there. Yeah. 
So he's got another Rapunzel. Okay. Just conceded. Oh my goodness. I'm going first. I have a Lilo and a Simba. It almost doesn't even matter. Um, I'm going to get rid of the uninkable. There are the five drop. I'll get rid of the four drop. That's just. What am I worried about drawing here? More Cusco's. Worry about that right there. Yeah. <laughs> I doubled the number of uninkables in my hand. Um, that's unfortunate. That happens. I'll hold two genies in the list. What, three Cusco's left in the deck? Sorry. Okay, Emerald. Emerald, okay. That's pretty good. No turn one drop. This is going to get us pretty far ahead. Okay. It's an interesting one. Um, I guess it's Still Mickey Mouse here. That was a really interesting play. I don't know that I've seen this genie in any list yet. Playing the really big genie, so he has a shift target. Let's think it like shift six though, wouldn't it? off. So I mean, even if he does challenge one, I can still quest with the other two. It'll put me at 15. So he could bounce somebody. He did not though. He's in a pretty rough spot here right now. Even if he plays like Rush Rafiki, I'll be at 17. And anything off the top of my deck is live minus the second genie. Any inkable card gives me the genie play. Played the Archimedes. It's interesting. It's very interesting, actually. And that was what I was hoping was going to happen. 
Honestly, did not expect that to happen. Alright, we're tossing her down. Casey has a bounce spell. This forces him to have two bounce spells. Um, he doesn't have anybody who can challenge in here one for one. So, there we go. We're going first again. Very nice. And we got two pieces of the puzzle. Uh, I would like to get a Flynn Rider. That would be great. Boom. That's what we wanted right there. We're going first. Let's see what we're going up again. Okay, that's pretty good for us. Assume steel. We've almost only seen one card so far, but that would be the worst case scenario. So might as well play like it is. We're gonna try to get some early lore down here. Uh, you have forgotten me in his deck too. Okay. Steel it is. Alright. So we are going to play this. Try to get our our hand down here fast, cause I'm sure he's he's got a second copy of you forgotten me and in your hand as well. I'll probably ink the uh, forgotten me next turn, cause he's probably playing a song list. Boom. Play both of these. <laughs> He's got the second you've forgotten me. I'm fine. If he has grab your swords, I'm probably toast. Rapunzel, I guess is his play here. Yep, he did have the second you've forgotten me, but he's going for the Rapunzel instead. I'm gonna try to get that grab your swords. He can't do anything but race to the finish line here. Hope you can play double grab your swords this turn. He doesn't have grab your swords, he loses. More or less. Doesn't lose next turn, but we'll lose. I'll be at 19, and I don't think. He can come back 20 down. Man, the pure truth be told, he really needs double grab your swords here. Because if that Mad Hatter gets to quest, which I guess he does not have it, but yeah, if the Mad Hatter gets to quest, 3 to 7, or 17 to 0 is pretty, pretty insurmountable. Something here. Uh, 
little Tinkerbell is nice, but still 19 to 0. Like I said, even if he survives this turn, I don't know. Like, he's got to count on me drawing one of, like, four six. There are, like, six dead draws that are left in here. Pretty unlikely. There's two you have forgotten maze left. Both genies. And then, I think both stitches are still in there. So, yeah. Six total cards that he would want me to draw. Yeah. Hey, grab your swords. There it is. Yep. Hey, rank four. All right. Let's see if we can get another game in here. Go first. Let's see what I can get here. There we go. Ink, inkables, and flexibility on two. Not too shabby. Feel pretty good about this opener. That's the one thing about this deck, like you usually know where you stand in your first seven cards. That's pretty good. So not having anything on one Basically means I just got to hope I don't see Tinkerbell on three. Even still, I may be able to push enough damn or uh, lure through that it won't matter. That's actually really good for me. Could play Smash on Simba. Still has me at 8 lore, though, before he really gets anything going. Hmm. Okay. 7 lore, I guess, before he gets anything going. He plays, you have forgotten me. I think I'm still fine. Ariel. Let's see what he gets with that. Beer guest. Right, inks the beer guest. Nope, inks the other Ariel. That's surprising. Definitely take the advantage there. Again, she can sing. One card in hand. I'm not super afraid of their songs at the moment. Six drop. Tink. Okay, pretty good. Get 
and grab your swords going. Uh, let's see. Jeez. His two tanks are better than my two tanks. Interesting play there. So he's digging for that grab your sword before I get too far ahead. Gosh, he's not even halfway through his deck. What do I think the odds are that he drew both the other grab your swords? Um, hmm. Ah, jeez. Go for the win here. Both grab your swords. I'm gonna go for it. Third Tinkerbell and a third grab your swords would do it. Going on a limb here, that's on the statistical side of it, that, that's not likely to happen. Okay. So there you guys have it, some gameplay footage as well as my updated deck list for the Amber Emerald Aggro list. Now we'll say despite having a pretty good track record with this deck, I do think in the current meta you are in for an up hill climb with amber steel decks really just kind of running away with the tournament scene right now and that being this deck's worst matchup i do think you're in for a long grindy tournament if you're going into a large event now having said that the matchup is absolutely winnable depending on how you play the matchup and you do have really favorable matchups against some of the other more popular counters to that deck. So success is still absolutely an option if you are going to a larger event. I would love to hear your all's feedback. If you guys have been playing the list or if you want to try this list out, let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, guys, Hobby Hero, out.